So last time we showed you how to do some basic uh, analysis with the data set that's already included in Stata. Um, but this time we're going to show you how to actually read in your own data set and uh, as well as run some syntax. Running syntax uh, is always preferable to actually do it in the dual file editor. And the reason that is is because sometimes you have a lot of commands just to prepare the data set and uh, you don't want to always type those out. You want to kind of save all those commands and then just run it from the dual file editor. For instance, uh, I'm just going to open up syntax file that I had um, that it's called video 2 for this video. And uh, you'll notice that you know I have a, several commands uh, that I could copy and paste into the command window. Um, but you can also run the commands also in the do file editor itself. And um, looking at these commands more closely, you can see that uh, I have stars over the very first thing. And what the stars mean, they're not really commands, they're just comments. And these are comments that you just write for yourself to remind yourself what is it that you're running and what order do you have it. And you can tell that my syntax here, every once in a while you see these comments just to remind myself, you know, what am I doing? Okay, I'm doing labels, I'm reading in raw data. And then immediately after the stars, uh, it knows, Stata knows to treat it as a real command. And the first command that I have here is clear. And that just basically clears whatever data had in the active memory and makes it ready to upload any data. And the reason why this is important is that Stata actually runs all the analysis in active memory to make it faster. Um, and so you can't upload more than one data set at a time. So it's going to give you an error message if you run the syntax over and over again. So clear clears it out. So you allows you to do that. So uh, for instance, if I just highlight this, just like an SPSS, uh, and I can just run it. And I can run it in uh, here in the run button, or I can run it in the do. And the difference between the run and do is that one is silent, and the other one actually shows you the commands. I always do do, um, because I can actually see what Stata attempted to do. And if I go back to my command window, it sees, OK, you read in this comment. I did nothing, and I cleared out the data file. Uh, the next thing I'm doing is reading in raw data from the internet, which is a cool feature of Stata. It's this infix command uh, which basically says to uh, load up fixed data file um, where it has two variables x and y and because it's a raw data file Stata needs to know how to interpret the columns and basically it's here the commands that I have is x starts in column 1 and ends in column 1 y starts in column 2 and ends in column 2 so using that coding scheme interpret this data set in this URL and you notice that I have these parentheses around the URL and if I highlight this and press do uh, Stata went online and found this data set and you can see that I have an X and a Y variable um, next thing I want to do is probably name these variables and uh, or provide labels for them um, as you can here's a comment that I made for myself label and you can see that I'm not not actually typing out label you can just type in lab uh, var which is variable label variable X and you put parentheses gender and I even gave myself the coding scheme here where one equals male and two equals female although this does not actually apply these values you have to do that yourself uh, and then next I said label variable Y uh, number of coffee per day this is just a silly survey I did the graduate students here and just because I wanted to know if there was some kind of relationship between gender and coffee drinking anyway so I uh, click on do and if I look back in my uh, stata I see that it's labeled these two uh, variables what do I want to do next and um, let's go ahead and change the name of the of the variables X and Y are kind of boring so here I have you can type out rename X gender which just means rename the variable x to the name gender and then rename y into coffee as you're beginning to figure out you kind of make a verb a, c a command followed by the variable to be acted on so um, that's the kind of the basic logic of syntax and you see we have gender and coffee named Okay, so now that we have names and labels, we actually want to put values to our two variables. And doing values seems a little tricky, but it's actually quite nice in Stata. 
uh, it might seem a little tricky because it's a two-step process. One, you have to define the value label. And secondly, then you need to assign that value label to the variable. And the reason why you define a value label and then assign it is because you may have the same type of coding scheme true across various variables. And so instead of like coding every single variable that follows the same scheme, maybe we have several different schemes that are about gender and one is male and two is always female, instead of always having to define that, we can have one label being applied to various variables. So that's a, it's kind of a nice thing about Stata. So first thing I gotta do is define that value label. And so it's label define, and I just do lab, lab def, and you generate a new label called gender label. We could have called it anything. You could have called it gender one or whatever. Then you go space, type in the number that you're gonna code, space, and then you type in male and two female. So you put the names. And if the names were longer, if it was, you know, if the values were something like, you know, male's job or female's job, you need to put parentheses so that it knows that these are the values. And then the second thing is that you have to actually then assign um, the labels to the variable. So the second command here I have label value gender, take the gender variable and assign it the gender label. And uh, so for instance, if I run these two things, it may seem like nothing's changed, but if I look in the data editor, uh, you'll see that the labels are being applied. Uh, I have 10 males and 8 females. And uh, maybe another way to have done it faster is just to do a quick tabulation. And uh, I think I even had that in my syntax. Highlight it and run it. And uh, we see, okay, looks like the coding happened. We have 10 males and 8 females. Maybe if, if we didn't like our um, labels, maybe it wasn't you know, elaborate enough, I want to call it male student and female student. And because it's two words, I'm putting the parentheses around. So I have label defined gender label one, gender label one equals male student and two equals female student. And keep it highlighted and run it. And, uh, well, we got a red error message, and you'll see lots of red error messages, unfortunately, as you start working with Stata. And uh, what's happened here is that my gender label is being it's not being modified because it's kind of a safety mechanism. Stata really wants to make sure that you're not doing something by accident. So it's preventing me from doing that. And so what I needed to have done is to add an option. Just put in the comma, which signifies an option, and type in modify, which is just confirming that I do want, in fact, it to be changed. Uh, run that. Looks like it went okay, and I can just t tab gender and see how it works. Yep, looks like uh, things got revalued. Looks like I'm going to be recoding some of my continuous variable. If you look at my copy variable, it's it's it goes from one through ten, and let's say I'm interested in you know whether or not men and women drink more coffee, and you know one way to to do that is to just tab gender and coffee. And you know that gives me kind of a really difficult graph to kind of make out, even if I reversed it. Um, you know, we see males and females drinking coffee various times, but you still can't quite tell which one is drinking more without really looking hard at this graph. So I I may want to recode my continuous variable by uh, collapsing the categories. And if I look at the syntax here, it shows me the coding scheme that I had thought of doing, and we have recode, which is the command coffee which is a variable so recode the variable coffee with the following uh, coding scheme where 0 through 4 equals 0 and 5 through 9 equals 1 and you put parentheses around each of the change I have a comma asking Stata to generate a new variable with this recode uh, and call it coffee G so that's actually create a new variable put a third variable called coffee G that's taking the old values of coffee and make it into a, essentially a, a binary um, categorization. So let's uh, highlight that, run it, and uh, 
tells me that it made 15 differences between coffee and coffee G, made those differences, um, made those changes, and then we have a new variable. And uh, we can tab that one and just to see what it looks like. And uh, okay, looks like we're evenly divided between 0 and 1. And I may want to now label what these 0 and 1 is. And just like last time, we're first going to create a value label and then going to apply that. Um, well, first we're going to create a, a label for coffee. So um, that's the first thing. Run it. Okay, the label is applied. Next, we're going to actually change the values. And like I said, we're going to define um, this value label called yes, no. And this is a situation where you might be using the yes, no in various different questions. So label define yes, no. Create a label value called yes, no, where 1 equals yes and 0 equals no. Then I want you to apply that to this new variable called coffee g. Uh, so label value coffee g, take coffee g and give it these label values yes no and I've already defined yes no in the previous line and then I tab coffee G just to see if the all the manipulations occurred right I'm just gonna highlight it and uh, I highlight only to the point of right here because if I highlight more above it's gonna give me an error message because it's already done this one thing uh, so highlight there and press do and uh, yeah, we see this nice coding scheme where no and yes. And um, the last thing I think I do in my do file here is a cross tab of those two categorical variables. So uh, let's look at gender and coffee. And uh, we run that. And we have male students and female students, and uh, five male students said no and five male students said yes to being heavy dr coffee drinkers and uh, four women and four four women said yes and no so that's pretty evenly divided um, I may want to maybe investigate whether there's some kind of relationship between gender and coffee drinking so I'm gonna run a chi-square and to do that um, I just apply uh, an option to the tab so tabulate coffee and gender include this option of running a chi-square at the same time. So I'm just going to highlight that. And um, we get a chi-score of 0 uh, means that there's a complete independence between these two variables. So there is no relationship between females and gender, mainly because um, the expected values in each cell is being met exactly. You know, this is if there was no relationship, uh, this is what this is what you would expect to see in a uh, cross tabulation. So there is no relationship between coffee consumption and gender, according to this data. Um, the last thing that I do, uh, we can do uh, a continuous test, uh, a statistical test but with the coffee variable as a continuous and so use the uh, non-coded one so if you remember uh, a t-test is basically looking at the differences in the average across two group groups um, and so this is a two sample t-test with equal variances assumed um, and the number of average of coffee cups drinking by males is 4.3 and for females is 4.62 so the question is is there enough difference between these two averages and uh, you can see here that difference is defined as mean of male minus the mean of females and uh, the null hypothesis is that the difference is zero and below are three alternative hypotheses depending on what you're testing one-tailed or two-tailed tests uh, so that's basically running a t-test. And next time we'll talk about uh, doing regression.